<laughs> to think the Mughals would prove such harsh taskmasters. <laughs> Forgive me. I did not know you had suffered so in your quest for the horn. I must say, your spirited accounts always come as a welcome change from the arid reports which fill my days. Though I have lived in these lands my entire life, to hear you speak of them, there is much and more I have yet to see. Truly, yours was a marvelous journey. <laughs> well, truth be told, when I think back on the sweeping vistas of the churning mists, I do feel some slight pangs of wanderlust. Alas, much as I would like to accept your invitation, I fear my present duties with the House of Lords demand my undivided attention. Someday, perhaps. By your deeds, you have helped us to lay the foundation for lasting reform. The formation of the Republic is but the beginning. For it is not only our system of governance which must needs change. We, the people, must learn to let go of our hatreds and rise above our bloody past. I only pray that I live long enough to see us achieve some measure of success, that I might know the lost did not die in vain. I can still see you there on the steps of faith, striding fearlessly towards the worm. If you could do that, who are we to bulk at the challenges ahead? The question of how best to strengthen ties with the other great nations of Eorzea has been debated at length in the Lords and Commons of late. As you may imagine, maintaining stability during this period of historic upheaval is our paramount concern. Nevertheless, we are greatly indebted to the Alliance for their support during the Grand Melee, and it would be remiss of us not to repay their faith in kind. Of course, we owe you the greatest debt of all, and it is my hope that in extending our support to you and the Scions, we might also express our gratitude to our neighbours, nay, our fellow Eorzeans, whom we pray you will continue to protect. The Lords and Commons agree on very little, but not a soul in either house begrudges your order this offer of patronage. For all you have done and will do, we thank you. a personal question. Now that the dust has settled, what will you do? Not as a scion, I mean, but what do you want for yourself? Lord Commander, pray forgive the interruption. News from House Fortone? 
An urgent message for the Warrior of Light. I was instructed to deliver it without delay. Master Thancred returned to the manor a short time ago, bearing an injured maiden. Master Leveilleur and Mistress Tataru are tending to her wounds, but they like not her chances. Respectfully, my lord, they have requested the Warrior of Light's immediate presence. You must go to them, my friend. And I shall go with you. For every ending marks a new beginning. From tragedy and sacrifice, we rise to greet a new dawn, as did he. Only to be drawn onto another battlefield, another cause, as if by fate. Is that...? Alize, Alfino's twin sister. She ran afoul of the Warriors of Darkness. I had been tracking them since the ceremony at Falcon's Nest. Little did I know I was not the only one. Evidently, she had learned of their activities and attempted to shadow them on her own. Poorly. I rescued her in the Twelfth's Wood, and together we fled north. But though I made every effort to cover our tracks, they caught up with us on the Ishgardian border. And in the ensuing struggle, Elise took an arrow to the shoulder. It was only after we had made good our escape that I realized it was poisoned. Thank you for coming so quickly. And you, Sir Emmerich. Think nothing of it. How is she? We have done all we can for now. Although the immediate danger has passed, the poison yet lingers in her blood. We came to Eorzea together, hoping to bring salvation to the realm our grandfather gave his life to protect. But when confronted with the bitter realities of its politics and its petty powermongers, she was driven to anger and to doubt. She refused to become embroiled in what she termed Eorzea's squabbles and distanced herself from the Scions. Though she remained hopeful of a brighter future, she would walk her own path. Would that it had not been so perilous. For all our differences, she's as dedicated as any scion to the salvation of Eorzea. But more than that, she is my sister. To be reunited with her, only to lose her forever. Gods, even to speak the words. Take heart, Master Alfino. She will be attended by our most skilled Kyrugians. Bear Mistress Leveilleur to the infirmary at once. Apprise Captain Whitecape of the situation and inform him that she is to be treated as my personal charge. W wait, don't go. Please, come closer. The 
The warriors of darkness are in league with the Asians. Slaughtering the primals is but the first step in their plan. They make for Zelfatol to bring about Garuda's summoning and to kill her. You must... You must stop them. I... I shall inform the others at once. Master Thancred, I would ask that you accompany Mistress Levea to the infirmary. Your knowledge of her injuries may well prove useful in determining her treatment. Of course. Thank the gods! What happened? So they were unable to see the ritual to its completion. Then Garuda is no longer a threat, and whatever the Asians and the Warriors of Darkness were planning has come to naught. But we should not tarry. The Knights have secured our path to safety. Well, well. What do we have here? You'd better not have killed a Primal without us! You! Wait, I know you. Still walking, I see. I could have sworn my aim was true. Just what is your game? Leading us a long way so these fools could step in and claim our prize? Now, now. Let's not make hasty accusations. By the look of things, the ritual was proceeding as planned. We arrived at the appointed hour. It was they who erred. It is hopeless. We cannot face them all. Do mine ears deceive? A boy! So that's the way of it. Twins! You had me worried for a moment there. Know that I will happily make it quicker for you, if you just stand still. Enough, Jarumal. We wouldn't want to upset the man in white with any unnecessary bloodshed now, would we? You've been awfully busy since we were kind enough to spare your lives. While you were idly consorting with the Asians, you mean? Seven hells! What could you possibly hope to achieve? Should I explain it to you? Very well. Consider it a reward of sorts for beating us here. You know the tale of Hydaelyn and Zodiac, I take it? Of the Great Sundering, and the reflections it created? Across ten and three they were divided. Reflections of the Source, each possessed of shards of light and dark. Just so. One of those reflections, the one nearest to the Source, is our home. And we were the heroes blessed with her light. But not all worlds hold light and dark in equal measure. In ours, the power of light was greater by far. So the Asians who once threatened our home were no match. And they fell before us, one after another, till none were left. Victory, we thought. And then came the light. A flood of pure, blinding radiance, annihilating shadow, and color 
and life itself. Ere long it will consume our world, leaving naught in its wake but blank perfection. That... that cannot be! Do you honestly expect us to believe such a story? Believe what you like. But it has happened before, on a world far removed from ours. The Thirteenth, which was swallowed by the dark and transformed into what you call the Void. Unchallenged light would condemn us to a similar fate. And so we joined hands with our former enemies, and with their aid came here, to the Source. For there is but one way to restore the balance and save our home. The Arda. Calamitous destruction with the power to break down the barriers between planes and see our worlds rejoined. You would doom our world to save your own? What would even become of us? Of you? Enough. I tire of talking. You know our cause. You know what is at stake. We are prepared to do whatever it takes. Are you? If there is aught you would say, say it. Otherwise, be gone. You have no friends here. Say, how are you feeling? Well enough, brother. Thanks to the kindness of our hosts. They told me you had departed for Zelfatol while I was still abed. I slept much better knowing that. Thank you. I take it your mission was a success. As if we needed any further confirmation that they are in league with the Assians. But to save another world? I think not. I too thought his story fanciful at first. But it is possible there may be a kernel of truth in all of this. At the very least, none of his claims contradict the word's account. You were following these people, Alizé. Why? During my travels, I had oft enjoyed tales of the Siams and their exploits. But after a time, I began to hear whispers of a gifted and theretofore unknown band of adventurers. Adventurers who had supposedly sworn to travel the realm slaying primals in the Siam's stead. The Warriors of Darkness. And in the course of investigating these rumours, you stumbled upon the Asian's involvement. Yes, exactly. Forgive me, but if these warriors of darkness mean to bring about another calamity, to what end do they hunt primals? To prompt an escalation. To deepen the beast tribe's feelings of helplessness and despair, and thereby drive them to summon ever more powerful gods. And lest we forget, these events do not occur in isolation. With their patron deities being slain left and right, the news of man's victory over Nidhogg must surely have sown panic in the minds of the Beastmen. Tis no wonder they wish to defend themselves. Power answered with greater power. Death with more death. A vicious cycle fueled by fear and hatred. I know it's like all too well. Indeed. The Asians sow discord and desperation and the warriors of darkness reap the harvest. And so it continues.
Yet that is not the extent of their ambitions. The Asian himself observed that once the powerless realize that the old gods have failed them, they will have little recourse but to look to a new one. We cannot let that happen. It should come as no surprise, but Alize and I have uncovered evidence that the Asians have been manipulating certain parties to ensure that a constant stream of crystals flows into the hands of the beast tribes. If we sever these supply lines, we should at least be able to slow the escalation. Agreed. Kral and I shall journey to Zelfatol and learn what we can of the Ixar's source. Then I, for my part, pledge to lead a similar investigation into the origin of the Nath supply. Sir Emmerich? As a member of the Eorzean Alliance, Ishgard is on a bound to play an active role in maintaining the security of the realm. You might also say that I have some personal motivation, given the Asians' dealings with my father. However, I make no secret of the fact that my knowledge of primal beings is scant at best. As such, I should be most grateful if one of your order were to assist me. Allow me, Sir Emmerich. I have dealt with the Nath before. Let us consult with Orianja then. Given his dedication to the study of primal beings, I should be surprised if he could not tell us something of value. Allow me to accompany you, brother. And before you think to refuse, know that I am not the girl I once was. I shall not be a burden. You have my word. But Alizé, you... You are more than welcome. After all, it was you who set us upon this path. Wait a minute! I'm afraid I can't allow you to leave just yet. Not until you try on the new outfit I prepared for you.
Who goes there? Oh, it's you. Forgive me for straying from the camp. He hasn't been feeling too welcome, to say the least. I thought a change of scenery might do him good. But, alas. <sighs> it's so quiet out here. The stars spread out before us, beckoning across time and space. Dawn may banish even the darkest night. How bitterly beautiful, those words. I should be stronger for all my experiences, yet my heart aches more than ever. I never understood why Grandfather gave his life that day. I thought that if I came here, I would find the answers I needed. But when I finally laid eyes on the land he sacrificed everything to save, saw firsthand the bickering, the pettiness. I was disappointed. I was angry. I could not fathom how these people were more deserving of his love than his family, than me. Nevertheless, I had to believe he had good reason. I was determined to uncover the whole truth of the calamity and, perhaps in so doing, find my own purpose in this sea of chaos. My travels have been enlightening, but I cannot say that I have enjoyed them. I have lost count of the many petty crises that I was helpless to resolve and of the people whose actions I could not understand. There were others, of course. Good people. People with whom I felt a kinship, whose lives I could not save. I found myself asking what it was all for. Why try if I was doomed to fail in the end? But then I recalled Grandfather's words to my father, years ago, before he left Charlayan behind forever. To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. We must all protect that which we hold most dear in the manner of our own choosing. We have to try, do we not? Of course it's one thing to try and another to do. There were times while I was tracking the warriors of darkness when I faltered, when I was afraid. But then I thought of my brother, of Uri Anger. Oh, pray forgive me. This conversation has been rather one-sided, hasn't it? Mayhap you could recount some of your adventures in Ishgard. Gods! They must have been at each other's throats from dawn till dusk. I dare say you managed to keep the peace, though. Merely being in the presence of the Warrior of Light is surely enough to shame anyone into behaving. The hopes and dreams of so many rest on your shoulders, Warrior of Light. As long as the sun rises, we can but carry on. For the sake of those we hold dear. To what end dost thou cling to the tainted gifts of the Mother? Every tool has its purpose. Even this. Well, what is it? 
The seeds sown in Vilbrand have been plucked from the earth and left to wither. Alas, Titan's demise sufficed not to drive the kobolds to deepest desperation. What did the man in white have to say? That we are to proceed as he did first set forth. Well, that's easy for him to say! It's not his bloody world on the brink of destruction, is it? Be thou well reminded that with an end to Ishgard's unrest, naught now remaineth to preoccupy the Scion's thoughts. And thus may they devote their every energy to thwarting thee and thine. I foresee only greater difficulties ahead. Foresee? Are you sure you don't welcome them? I'm starting to think you might hold a candle for your old friends after all. Pray do not mistake mine intent. I but look upon the path which lieth before us with due trepidation. Shouldst thou be of like mind, pray consider then another course. For the power to invoke the ardor belongeth not unto the Asians alone. With thine own hand, strike down thine enemy, the so-called hero who would see thy home lost to light. Do but this, and thou wouldst at a single stroke disrupt the all-too-delicate balance of this realm, plunging her straightways into chaos. You do realize what you're suggesting, yes? To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. The words of my teacher and a creed I hold close to my heart. Very well. Draw him out. We'll make it quick. It shall be done. What good a creed one cannot uphold? What hurts soothed? What lives saved? Oh, hapless fool, what hast thou wrought by thine own hands? Minfilia, my friends, I shall not now beg your forgiveness. Full deeply though it paineth me to walk it, I shall not stray from my chosen path. As Moonbreeder remains steadfast, so too shall I. Sisters, twenty years ago, Alamigo, our home, was claimed by the Galian Empire. In our haste to overthrow the King of Ruin, we turned a blind eye to our foes in the north. With our glorious revolution, we but laid a path for a new tyrant to succeed the old. And when confronted with our failure, we fled. Not a day goes by that I do not think of those we left behind. Think of them and feel ashamed. And I know each and every one of you feels the same. We abandoned them. Our own flesh and blood to labor till their backs gave in and their breath gave out, building the twisted steel ramparts which now mar our once majestic mountains. 
We abandon them, the brave and true, to fight and die for their country. Or worse, to be conscripted and sent off to rob another poor bastard of his home. We abandon them, the meek and powerless, to bow and scrape when the Galleons pass, to sully themselves that they might live to see another day of misery. The Black Wolf may be dead, but a new Imperial Viceroy reigns in Alamigo now. A beast, not a fraction as merciful. You all know the Aeorzean Alliance will do not to oppose him. For all their promises and platitudes, they will not act if there's no profit in it. Only we can free our brothers and sisters from the Empire's tyranny, my friends. Only we have the courage to stand and fight. They have imprisoned us. They have enslaved us. And they have murdered us. But no more. Blood demands blood. And the Garleans shall pay for every drop they have spilt upon our lands. This I promise you, for we have a power within us, my friends. A power befitting our pride, our righteousness. Only join us, and we shall grant you the means to unleash it, and together we shall see the Alamegan standard raised over the mountains of Gear Arbania once more! A power befitting their pride. Not at all ominous, that. Wait, is that... What are you two doing here? I could ask you the same thing. Well, well, this is quite the surprise. If you see what I see, if you feel as I feel... Might I suggest we continue this conversation in more agreeable surroundings? For it is not strength of arms that will win this battle, but strength of heart. My thanks, comrades. You must be the esteemed adventurers of whom I've heard so much. I understand you have taken an interest in our cause. A great interest, you might say. Your words have certainly made quite an impression on my friend and I. The Resistance has long, and some would say wisely, avoided open engagements with the Garleans, but you and yours seem confident against the world in arms. I can only assume you have good reason to be so bold. Why, one might even think you were planning to summon a primal because that would do much to explain the sizable shipment of crystals you recently received from your smuggler friends, whom our Ishgardian allies have since detained, lest you wonder. I'd like to hear more about the Griffin. The real Griffin. Your performance earlier didn't fool us. Ah, the famous scions of the Seventh Dawn. I should have known better than to think I could conceal the truth from you, Lot. You are right. I am not the Griffin, but I speak with his voice, and it was at his behest that we procured those crystals.
You are wrong, however, if you think that we procured them to summon a primal. We use them to reach an accord with the Amalja. In exchange for crystals to summon their god, they will aid us in the fight for Alamegan liberation. You've got to be joking! Have you gone completely mad? When people find out you helped the Lizardmen summon Ifrit, they'll turn on the resistance. Alamigo will never be free! This isn't a fairy tale, girl. We don't have the luxury to play at being honorable heroes. It's because the likes of you wouldn't sully your saintly hands that Alamigo's been under the yoke for the past 20 years. But the Griffin won't stand for it, and neither will we. We're ready to do whatever it takes. What proof do you have of this arrangement with the Amalja? What? Aside from a lack of crystals? None. But the Beastmen have a great big pile of the things if you fancy looking. You might want to hurry, though. It'll not be long before they summon their god. Search our camp if you don't believe me. We have naught to hide. If there is a cache to be found, Eder and I will find it. Then let us be off. Are you perchance the Warrior of Light? Aye. I thought so. You should know that a great many who have joined us did so because you saved them. Because you showed them that one brave man can make a difference. You saved me too once. Helped a friend over in Quarry Mill make some medicine I needed. But that was a lifetime ago. On behalf of my brothers and sisters, I thank you. You gave us hope where there was none, courage and strength when all was lost. We shall not squander your gift. I know that look, Ida, and I do not like it. You cannot seriously be contemplating taking up arms with that band of cutthroats. I... I just... If the Griffin and his men have their way, it is only a matter of time before the situation in Alamigo comes to a head. Your homeland's future teeters on a knife edge, and any reckless action, however small, could have irrevocable consequences. You mustn't lose sight of that, Ida. When the time comes, we must all make our choices, but we must do so in full possession of the facts. Now, let us away. There is work to be done. This isn't right. The Amalja would never leave this place so poorly guarded. Not willingly, no. <laughs> ah, the saviors of Eorzea. Slow as ever. By the twelve. Will you never learn? You know, you're right. Mayhap it is time for a change of tack. Killing primals, tormenting beastmen, hastening the birth of a new god. 
It's all a bit much, isn't it? And frankly, we don't have the leisure to do it. But killing the Warrior of Light, on the other hand, that would soon plunge Eorzea into chaos. One life for one world. A fair exchange! Wouldn't you agree? Lest you forget, you've more than one opponent. Since you will offer more than mere target practice, unlike your sister. Alize! Did... Did I not tell you, Alphano? I am not the girl I once was. My brother was always the clever one, while my talents lay elsewhere. to stand against us, to destroy all that we hold dear, then you shall die by my sword! Let's finish this. It ends... now. The chains! God, you snake! You would betray us as well? He that holdeth fast unto his convictions shall never count betrayal amongst his crimes, though all the world may call him villain. My path is unchanged, my creed sacrosanct. This I believe with all my heart. But say, warrior of darkness, and speak true, what dost thou believe? That rendering up the souls of thy world in service to the rejoining will grant it salvation? Nay. By the Twelve! Oriange! Mine apologies, Master Alfino. That the brightest light might shine, duty did compel me to walk in darkest shade. You sweet fool, I was almost willing to believe you had turned against us. I expect a full explanation when this is over. For now, may I assume you have turned your cloak for the last time? Thou mayest, my lady. By thy leave. Even odds, then. No matter. We'll crush the lot of you in one fell swoop! Understood. Hearken to me. We only have one chance. Channel your ether into my blade that I might strike before the mage casts his spell. I cannot do it alone, but together, together we can defeat them!
Get ready! They come! Alize, are you hurt? A touch dizzy, but otherwise fine. Thank you. And there you have it. Our friend is too stubborn to die. <sighs> we are far from finished. Or have you never considered how we came to this world? Crystals? You mean... like the Assians? Just so. As the Assians flee under the rift twixt plains with crystals of darkness, so did these warriors come hither with crystals of light. Eloquent, as always. Aye, like the Assians, we too are beyond death. You cannot defeat that which is eternal. Wait! Such methods as the Assians employ require the renunciation of the flesh. You... you would have had to... At long last, you see. To save our world, we gave our lives. We were just adventurers trying to make our way. And our job here, a favor there, we never aspired to be warriors of light. But word of our deeds spread, and soon people were calling us heroes. They placed their hopes and dreams on our shoulders, and bid us fight for all that was good and right. We fought, and we fought, and we fought until there was no one left to fight. We won! And now our world is being erased from existence. We did everything right. Everything that was asked of us and still, still it came to this. You of all people should understand. We cannot, we will not falter. We brought our world to the brink of destruction, and now we must save it. Okay. I've died before, Arbut. I'm not afraid to die again. No matter how many times we fall, we must rise and carry on the fight for those we left behind.
to have known the depth of sorrow and embraced the highest sacrifice. Nonetheless, Master Louis Soi, guide my hand, I pray you, as fate's thread spinneth upon this most capricious spindle. Quickly! Thou must needs invoke the power of thy crystal! What is this place? Such pain. Such sorrow. Oh, my dear children. It can't be. Mother Heidelin, hearken unto your children's plea. From two worlds do we gather, and from two worlds do we offer a bounty of light. In this desperate hour we do beseech your intercession. We beg an audience with the word of the mother, with your chosen Minfilia. Your cries go not unheard nor your sacrifices unnoticed. Though many are lost, there are those we can yet save, whom I can yet save. Blessed children of the first, the light of your world hath grown blinding in its radiance, but it is not yet absolute. I will hie me to your world, and there take unto myself the light which riseth even now to drown it, as darkness once did drown another. Now you deign to answer our prayers? I will suffer this farce no longer! As the Asians must serve as instruments of Zodiac's will, so too must others carry out the will of Hydaelyn. But for the boon you have granted her, she has grown strong enough to set me free, that I might serve as her emissary. Your suffering, your sacrifice, your supplications, she has heard all. We will not let the first fall to light. Thank you, Urianger, for bringing everyone here. It fills my heart with joy to look upon the faces of my friends once more. In taking you unto her bosom, I knew that Heidelin had bequeathed to you a sliver of her grace, granting you strength long sought. And in treating with the Asians, 
I learnt of a star like unto our own, a doomed world of fallen heroes in whom I glimpsed ourselves, the first. Full long did I search for a means to save this world, concluding at the last that the answer lay in the power of blessed crystals. And thus did I labor to set light against dark. Yet I knew from the beginning that this salvation would not come without sacrifice. For the instrument of the first's deliverance would of necessity be required to journey thither, there to remain, mayhap forever. You orchestrated all of this not to save her, but to send her away! One life for one world. Such was the bargain, and you the coin, though it were not mine to spend. Have we not walked together in the light of the crystal, and at her bidding borne witness to the joys and sorrows of this land? Each and every one of you knows my heart. If this be the price I must pay, I pay it gladly. You would go alone then? My dearest Thancred, you who have ever watched over me, I am truly grateful for all you have done on my behalf, as would my father be. Your kindness, your compassion, your love. These are your gifts to me and our gifts to them, forming a bond which transcends time and space. Sometimes I forget you are not the child I once knew. Make me proud. Long have I watched you from Hydaelyn's side, watched as you nurtured and kept safe the light of the dawn. The dark recesses of the world hide untold secrets and dangers. Thus do I entrust to you, Tupsimati. I pray you, keep to the path that you may never have need of it. crystals is all but spent. Perhaps, if there is naught else to be done. Hear me, servants of Hydaelyn. If you would have us place our trust in you, then I would ask a favor. Take us with you. Take us home. We were blind to the truth once, so I tell you this, as one fool to another. Light, dark, it doesn't matter. What matters is how you choose to use them. We made our choice and you see what came of it, so please, forge a different path. Seize a better fate. Does 
a strange feeling. So many times have I watched you depart, my heart filled with worry. And ever did you return to me in triumph. Someday, when I have found a way to free this star from her sorrow, I promise you I shall repay the favor. in the solar. It's been too long since we were all together like this. Not since. Not since after Moonbreda. Much has changed since then. We ourselves, most of all. Though not all who were lost could be gathered here today, we may take comfort in the knowledge that those who are not are carrying on the fight. While I am grateful to our friends in the North for their hospitality, it is isn't half good to be back. But, as Papalima rightly said, much has changed since we last stood here. The Scions of the Seventh Dawn are not as they once were, nor should we be. Our travels in the North brought us into contact with a host of fine and generous people, and their selfless deeds served to show me that it is not lofty causes that should inform our actions, but our hearts. And I hope that the Scions might continue in this manner, as individuals driven by individual principles. Provided we all sincerely desire to work towards Eorzea's salvation, I believe the paths we follow to achieve it need not, and should not, be dictated by any single ideal. Companions bound by a common purpose, free to go whither they will. The idea is not without merit. Very well. I shall resume my research of the primals and the elder gods of Eorzea. Should anyone have need of my findings, you need only ask. I should be glad of your continued assistance. Well... My main purpose in coming here was to see the signs of the Seventh Dawn restored and my dear friend found. Nevertheless, having involved myself in your struggles, I feel compelled to see them through to the bitter end. For Minfilia's sake. That is, if there are no objections. You will always be welcome here, Kryle. Oriangere, can we trust you to carry on your investigation of the Assians as before? Regardless of mine own desires, I am undeserving of your trust having so villainously deceived you all. Now, now, I'll hear no more of that. It would be disrespectful of Minfilia's wishes. She entrusted matters here to us, that we might protect this star and understand the truth which hides at her heart. 
Mayhap I can handle the former, but I think you far better suited to the latter. No? Very well. Then out of love for my Lady Minfilia and Moonbreeder both, this shall be my solemn charge. I... Papalimo and I should probably return to Thandalan to keep an eye on the Resistance. There's still the matter of the Griffin and the Amalja, not to mention the new Imperial Viceroy. That little lot must be worthy of our attention, right? And what will you do, Alizé? You know I have no great love for organizations and formalities. That being said, this new approach you propose is not wholly objectionable. And we've always got him to keep us from bickering. But I will suffer no titles. I am not here for House Leveille, nor to walk in Grandfather's shadow. Upon that point, we see eye to eye. If it please you, you may think of me as but another comrade in arms. Well then, Alfie, I for my part shall see to the paperwork and the finances with my characteristic aplomb. I would not have it any other way, Tataru. And we mustn't forget you. What now for the warrior of light? Indeed. The path behind us was fraught with hardship, and the path before us will be no less unforgiving. But a new dawn shall break over the realm, and I see before me the faces of those who will deliver it. Heroes are another world's villains. One world's loss, another world's gain. Where men go as one, there is life. And where there is life, My friends, if I may, I would ask that you entrust Tupsimati to me. Clouds gather upon the horizon, and as Master Louisois's disciple, I would keep it close at hand. Thank you. I shall guard it well. There is cause to hope. For every ending, every parting, marks a new beginning.